the question is living for God hard is it hard to live for God is it hard to abide by uh, kingdom principles live according to uh, the expectations laid out you know in Scripture living for uh, living our lives for Jesus Christ when you go and you look at Scripture um, you know there's nothing in Scripture it's it's interesting to me uh, and maybe this is just a Western culture thing I really don't know I don't I don't have decades of time in other cultures um, born and raised in the United States so that's what I know but it seems like at least in Western culture a lot of the prevailing thought in many Christian um, hey man what's up girl a lot of prevailing thought in Christian circles is that God his purpose now they don't say it like this necessarily but his his whole his sole purpose really is to save me bless me love me and um, divinely pour out his blessings upon me because I am so special I mean that's that's really not the picture you get from scripture it's the picture I think through the lens of self-centeredness um, you're you're not going to hear a lot of the popular TV guys um, or maybe even radio folks uh, you know talk about it being difficult or hard to live for God um, now we can do comparisons and say yeah but uh, ultimately you're living a better life and we're going to talk a little bit about that but the the ultimate answer is yeah uh, yeah, it's um, it is hard to live for God. Uh, why? Why would that be? Well, um, Scripture tells us. You know, Jesus said, "In the world, you're going to have trouble. There's going to be tribulation." Uh, Jesus said, "Broad is the way. You know, wide is the gate that leads to destruction, and narrow and straight is the path. You know, the word that leads to life. We're we're." We're not guaranteed that every day is going to be a cakewalk. In fact, when you just look at it logically, um, if there's, you know, obviously Christians trust, know, believe, you know, in the spiritual realm, in God, in demons and angels, doesn't it make sense that, uh, I mean, if there's an enemy of our souls, he's going to be fighting the folks that are actually trying to live right. He's not going to fight the folks that aren't. He's not going to fight folks in false religions like he's going to fight people that are in the true. Of course not. Uh, that, that wouldn't make any sense whatsoever. And so, is it hard to live for God? Well, yeah. I would say, is it hard to be a good parent, raise good kids? Yeah, I'm sure it's much easier just to give your kids anything they ever wanted, avoid any and all conflict. You know, sure, it's much easier to do that. Is it easier to sit on the couch and eat Cheetos and not have to go out and work and earn a living? Yeah. Is it hard to be a good productive citizen of these wonderful United States? Yes. Is it easy to march in a rally and proclaim why everybody else should be supporting you uh, you know as a bum and a leech on the rest of everybody else yeah that's easy it's harder to go out to, to scrape out a living to hit the books and study to develop a career to work hard and build a business you know to fail at this and fail at that and finally you know, you you learn you grow you develop and you're successful it's harder right? Things that last, things that are worthwhile, things uh, that have actual importance and value are harder, right? We intuitively, intuitively we know this, right? What's the old, uh, the old adage? You get what you pay for. I mean, that basically is the same understanding, right? Things that are, things that are cheap are cheap. Things that come cheap are cheap. And so, 
if you're going to have something, whoa, that was, that was almost lost it there. If you're going to have something that's worthwhile, if you're going to have a, a life that's worthwhile built upon solid principles, um, a life that's worth, worth passing on, sharing with others, these types of things, forget the, the eternal, forget eternity. Uh, just in this life, which of course is just a reflection of, the, of reality, a reflection of what <coughs> is eternal, just in this uh, temporal life, things that are of value are more difficult. Uh, it's much more difficult to keep a garden than to let weeds grow. Uh, I could go on and on and on and on and on with analogies. But that is the case. Why is that the case? We The flow, the current of this world is to death and destruction. It is, it is you know, when you, when you look at really even just like scientific law, right? Entropy is increasing in the universe. Uh, things decay. Things naturally go to a state of worse rather than better. This is why... Again, things like the theory of evolution are absurd. Uh, things go bad. Things go negative. That's what we observe. That's what happens. You build a house. It's grand. It's beautiful. You leave it there for 50 years. You come back. It doesn't turn. It was a one story. Now it's two stories. And it, you know, it was a 60 foot pool. Now it's 150 feet and beautiful, that's not what happens. There's weeds, there's mold, there's decay, that's what happens. This is the way it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. It's easier to be spiritual uh, louses. It's easier to be spiritually lazy. It's easier not to pray. It's easier not to fast. It's easier not to get together and, and be a ministry in the body of Christ. It's easier not to study the scriptures, search the scriptures, find the mind of God. As, as Ephesians uh, says, to find out what pleases God. And then, of course, as James says, be doers of the word and not hearers only. To, to, to not only find out what pleases him, but to do what pleases him. Of course, it's easier. Is living for God hard? Uh, by our definition, I would say, yes. The good news is we don't live for God as robotic soldiers doing it on our own. There is grace, love, and mercy. God provides his spirit, his word. The Bible says that the angelic hosts are ministering spirits given to the heirs of salvation. Uh, if we are in a place, hopefully you are, where they teach and preach the truth of the principle of God's word when it comes to the body of Christ and what that body is there for and how we are there as a support structure to help one another and, and be there for one another. Uh, God has provided all of these tools in order to make it possible, doable. By our own righteousness, we are not able. It is not only difficult, it is impossible to live for God on our own merit, on our own righteousness. That's why the law needed something to come and replace it. That's why Jesus had to come. Jesus had to do what he did, that ultimate sacrifice, so that we could have a pathway to actually uh, bridging the gap to God. The law did not do it. The law was good. The law pointed out certain things. The law, and when I say the law was good, obviously I'm talking in the context of the New Testament where it says that the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, that the law is good if one uses it lawfully. Uh, these are the scriptures that I'm referring to. The, the law is there to lead us, to show us the difference between Christ and and our sin. So, is it difficult? Yes, in the context that I have put it in. Comparatively, things that are worthwhile are difficult. But, is it hard in the sense of we just gotta eke 
eke out a meager, <laughs> a meager, meager existence living for God? No. Why? Because he is there to help. He is there to assist. He is there with his grace and mercy and love. He has provided all the tools, his word, his spirit, his power, his love, his grace, all of these things to assist us in our living for God. The body of Christ is there. Angelic hosts are there. And so do not be discouraged when you look around and you think, man, this is hard. Or my goodness, it seems like it would be so much easier if I just gave up. And yes, this has been the challenge all throughout history in trying to live for God. David said, look, when I look around, I see the wicked prospering. Well, don't be discouraged if you look around and you see the same thing. You Don't be discouraged if you feel these same feelings. We are human. The Bible lets us know that God knows that we are human. He knows our faults and, fa and frailties and failures. He knows, I think the Bible says, that we are but dust. You know how he knows? Well, first he created us, and second, he became one of us. So he knows. Take courage in that take strength in that and know the way might be hard but he has provided so that we can bear it love you guys be blessed hope this has encouraged you and helped you get out there and do the will of god